Says, uh, so, welcome to another Man Up podcast. Uh, I'm going through the book The River of Doubt uh, by Candice Millard. And it's about Theodore Roosevelt's journey, um, adventure after he won, uh, lost, sorry. Uh, an election so he was uh, he, 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 oh jeez what was it, Taft that he took over from when Taft got shot could be wrong well, I think it was Taft but so that's how Ted, Teddy they put Teddy into uh, the uh, vice president spot just to keep him in in a in a place that they keep an eye on him that he wouldn't rebel rouse that he wouldn't wouldn't do too much uh like he he was a guy who had principles and I don't agree with him every on on everything politically but he had principles and he was an action taker so they stuck him there and then uh the president gets um assassinated he takes over uh, so he declared that first term. It was a year into the term. So he declared that first term, which is three years, as a full term. Went to the second term, realized that coming coming to an end, he was the youngest president ever. Coming to that end, he wished that he didn't declare that first um, term a a complete term and so he could have had he could have had three and basically three quarters if he wanted to so he then he he was out for a term and then he realized no i wanted i want to to be president again i want uh a full two terms so he ran again as an independent when the republicans wouldn't give him their nomination because they had the incumbent president who might have been tough. I got everything mixed up anyway. But then he went to the general election. He lost to Woodrow Wilson. And that was a crushing blow. Because he was an independent. He came second as an independent, which is pretty good. But that was a crushing blow. And I'm reading this book, which is uh, about the what he did post election so we've got this this is about about teddy about theodore roosevelt this is about theodore roosevelt after his okay so there's we'll backtrack we're gonna set a couple things up with this how he deals with sorrow so his wife and his mom died within hours of each other his mom was only in her 40s his wife just given birth to their child she died of bright's disease uh so it says that night in his diary roosevelt marked the date with a large black x and a single anguished entry the light has gone out of my life desperate to conquer his despair roosevelt resorted to the only therapy he knew physical hardship and danger He left his infant daughter with his sister Anna and boarded a train for the Dakota Badlands where he hoped to find the kind of hard existence that might keep his body and mind too busy to ache for Alice, which is his wife. Roosevelt rarely spoke about the terrible night or about his first wife, even to their daughter, who was named after the mother she would never know. He was a different man when he finally returned east for a good two years later. He was filled with vigor and perspective after mastering an entirely unfamiliar world of danger on the American frontier and defeating by sheer energy and physical exertion the grief that had threatened to overwhelm him. Black care, he explained in a rare unguarded comment on the subject, rarely sits behind a rider whose pace is fast enough that little paragraph and a half and that quote from uh roosevelt black care rarely sits behind a rider whose pace is fast enough 
that speaks to everything about this man. And I'm not putting this man on a pedestal again. I don't agree with everything he says, but the guy was an action taker and he was a man. It goes down a few paragraphs and his wife is, is his new wife is, is dealing with, uh, with, uh, Roosevelt post election post post election loss and he's he's pretty down on himself and she noted he would not rest until he found some physically punishing adventure that would take him far from home and Edith his second wife feared place him in grave danger so that's how Theodore Roosevelt dealt with sorrow So there's a couple things in his life that led him to deal with this kind of thing. When he was a kid, he was a sick, weakling who had asthma, who had all kinds of illnesses, and he couldn't um, endure the physical... uh, stress, hardship, adventure that his friends and his, 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 especially his younger brother could endure. So they'd go on vacation and he'd, Teddy would have to spend days bedridden. Um, I read one of the things is they, uh, made him smoke cigars when he was a kid. I guess they thought that would clear up the lungs, which is funny. Um, but then his old man, finally came to the point and this is a good lesson for parents of course i'm not one so i cannot give advice to parents in good conscience that being said i have some great parents um but his old man had decided that he wasn't going to have a sick weakling of a child so this is before weightlifting before all before cross training and and all this training that we do now um he put his son on a workout regimen so he basically beat the weakness out of teddy and that set the precedence for his wife dying his mom dying on the same day and his dad when his dad died he had the same reaction uh he went out i think it was um to the, into the wilderness in Maine with a, a tracker and he spent basically the winter out in Maine with people he didn't know but um, he put his body through everything and came out stronger that was when his dad died when his mom and his wife died he went out west which was still the wild west and um, bought a ranch hunted he had some dicey situations with some some outlaws some gunmen um, and he came back, as they say in the book, a stronger, uh, more resilient man. So then, come this election that he loses, he decides that it's the same thing. And his wife, his new wife, his second wife, uh, realized the same thing, that he's not going to get better he's not going to heal unless he puts himself in danger puts his life in danger and uh, experiences the adventure that will kind of snap him out of it but more so the hardship that uh, will put things into perspective and I was watching this great show Uncharted if you're watching this on YouTube get this show I can in this you have it in the states on the outdoor network outdoor channel in canada they something happened with the licensing and we don't have it so i had to buy the dvds off of jim shockey's site which is it's fine by me um and he's got a little quote i don't know where it's from if it's his or whatever but he, he said you leave the things that mean most you leave the things that mean the most to figure out the truth about what means the most so Especially when you've got hardship, when you're dealing with something in your life, when you are feeling down, depressed, our reaction is to 
close up. It's to feel sorry for ourselves. It's to um, it's to pity ourselves. To almost want this sad feeling and this. We want to feel as though we're hard done by because it's far easier to be a victim. It's far easier to feel sorry for yourself than it is to man up and live life. So he's talking about, in this show, he's talking about why would you um, leave comfort? It makes no sense technically that you leave comfort for danger. But it's in danger, it's outside of our comfort zones, it's in stress, it's in pressure, it's in the unknown that we experience life. It's, it's, we're all the same to some level. We all have that piece of us, that calling, or that, that gnawing, or what Stephen Pressfield calls it, uh, he, ambition is, uh, I forget the quote, I should have written down, but ambition is the, your soul calling you, whatever. It's, it's, it's what your soul, soul is gnawing at you to, to chase and to pursue. We all have that. And it is not in uh, safety. It's not in mediocrity. It's not in self-pity. It's not... Uh, life cannot exist in complacency, in pity, in the norm, in what has become accepted as the way of life in cities and big towns. As you just do this, do that, do that, and you don't break free. You don't go out into the wild. You don't... Um, as he did, well, the third example, okay, as, as Teddy Roosevelt did, he, he put, he, he had an opportunity to, to ball up, to play the victim, to get people's sympathy, but instead of accepting ease because of a tough moment, he sought stress, pressure, and hardship. There's an instance that, this is captured in a different book. It's uh, The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt. It's on the shelf back there. but it, So he's in the Spanish War in Cuba. So I think it's America uh, was fighting Spain and Cuba. And the Spanish had, um, again, hopefully this history is correct, but the theme of it is correct. Spanish had uh, better weapons. I think it was either Russian or German weapons. I think it was Russian weapons. So they're being supplied. They had better weapons. They had machine guns, all these different things, like the, I don't know, twisting whatever, Gatling guns or whatever they were. So his men were being held back, pressed back under suppressed fire uh, or suppressive fire. And Roosevelt stood up with his sword and charged this is a this is a kid who grew up he grew up rich from a wealthy family. He charged the guns. And him getting up and running toward the fire got his men up and they eventually took the guns. They took this the it was a hilltop um little ranch or something where where the Spanish were. They took that. But it's it's again when he's facing stress, sorrow or a dicey situation the his his way of dealing with it is pressing forward and that should be your way of dealing with it it should not be to stop it should not be to feel sorry for yourself it should not be to to accept pity it should be to ask more from life and and venture out into the unknown and to be on your comfort zones into danger and experience adventure life and become a tougher stronger man as a result of it in uncharted you're going to see a lot of cool things he travels to unique parts of the world and uh that's where life is it's it's in travel it's in it's in the unknown it could be in your back 40 as he says it, you don't have to travel far for this but to go to your unknown those places where you you feel a little uneasy where you're going to have to push yourself, you're going to have to face your fears, and that's how you deal with feeling sad, sorrow, and the like. That's where I'll finish it. A few quotes from the book, which is, again, it's a good book, uh, The River of Doubt. 
by Candace Millard and TV show. I'll put links below. Jim Chalky's Uncharted. Put a link to his website is uh, on there. But when you're feeling sad, when you're feeling down, two things. When you're feeling sad, when you're feeling down, find silence. Really think about what's that hard thing that you're kind of uneasy about doing and do it. What's the little dangerous thing that you feel uneasy about and just go do it. For me, sometimes it's, you know, grizzly bears are out in the Rockies uh, and technically you're not supposed to take your dog off leash because they attract bears, but that's, I don't know. Why have a dog if you're not taking them off leash in the mountains? So I go there, I feel a little uneasy and man, it's, it's a beautiful experience every time. Uh, there's times in traveling where there was things where I was feeling uneasy about. You have to go toward them. You don't have to be stupid. You have to go toward these things in a smart way. But you got to go towards them. You got to face your fears. Second of all, with in relation to Shockey's quote, um, in life, you can't go through life going through the motions. That's not how life exists. That's not why we're here or or how we feel fulfilled and purposeful and alive we have to go beyond the monotony of our everyday life what ex- what society says is the norm and we have to go uh, out into the world we have to travel we have to push ourselves we have to to do the things that our soul we know what we want to do deep down we know the things that we are dying to do teddy roosevelt when he was a kid he was he was amazed with uh cowboys so he went out and became a cowboy in his, I think it was in his 20s. Um, do those things. Really think about it. Get in touch with yourself. Spend some time in silence in nature. Figure out those things that your soul is calling you to do. And have the balls to go out and do them. That's where your life exists. That's where you're going to feel fulfilled. And uh, yeah, take action on that stuff. With that, um, I'll put some links down below. Some stuff for you guys. And... Uh, if you're if you're watching this on the YouTube or reading this on the site, check out the site average to alpha dot com, and uh, yeah, have an awesome week. Take care.